Welcome to Quality Flow Projects, the platform where expert quality assurance meets seamless project management, putting visibility and control at your fingertips. This is a high level view of some of the main features of Quality Flow Projects QA jobs, dashboards, and the data visibility and data management capabilities of the dataset table. To create a Quality Flow project, navigate to the folder icon on your global navigation bar and click Create Project. Give your project a name and upload some data. The first thing to notice is the dataset table. The table expands as jobs are created and work is completed. For example, you can see in this project with some completed work that available to you once work has been done is the status of the units, any review reasons or comments that have come out through the work process, the names of the contributors who have worked on the job, the actual answers that people have provided depending on the tool that you are working with, as well as history and other information. There is a column picker and each column is sortable and filterable. Above the dataset table, you'll see an overall raw progress banner, and this is where you can keep an eye on how your project is progressing at a glance. The next tab across is the job canvas, and this is where you create your jobs. You create your first job by clicking on the plus at the bottom of the All Data box. Notice that this is called a leading job. Jobs that are created directly off the data box are called leading jobs. Give your job a name. Choose Work Job or QA Job. Normally, you'll be choosing a work job as your first job. Leading QA jobs are typically used later in a project for targeted reviews or revisions. Choose Start from Scratch or use a template. The design page will look familiar from ADAP jobs. Add your data, design your job, and preview as usual. Skip the quality tab for now for work jobs. Test questions and other automated quality assurance methods performed in job are currently being developed and will live in this section. Move to the settings page and choose your settings, including your contributors. Details on the settings page can be found in the customer success documentation and will be described in another video. Click start data routing and take note of some of the settings that cannot be changed after you have done this. Now, the job is in a paused state meaning that it is ready to have data loaded into it, but it won't be available to contributors until you click Run Job. Head back now to the dataset table to add your units to the job. At this point, you'll usually just be selecting all and sending all of your units to the first work job. You can also use the data group feature to further sort and categorize your data, as we'll see later. And you can also select units to be prioritized. Back over on the Jobs canvas now, and the next thing to be aware is of the plus sign at the bottom of the work job. This plus sign allows you to create a copy of the work job and can be used for quality assurance manual review. Click here and you'll notice that this is called a following job. Following QA jobs form a loop with leading work jobs. Work and feedback can be sent back to the original contributors by people working in the QA jobs, and quality jobs also collect detailed metrics which are reported in the contributor and quality dashboards, as we'll see in a minute. Give your job a name, and over on the design page, you'll notice that it's already a copy of the work job. If you hit preview, you can see that using the default settings, QA also comes with a reject button and a free text box for feedback. However, there are other settings that you can use in Quality Assurance, and these are configured on the Quality tab in the Quality Assurance jobs. The default setting that we just saw did not allow the QA contributors to modify judgments. They would only be given an accept or reject. We will review the other possible settings later in the video. With your quality settings chosen, head over to your settings tab. Check your settings and start data routing. Head back to your jobs canvas to decide how much work you want to QA. I'm going to choose 10%. This will send a random 10% per contributor to the job to be reviewed. Now you're ready to run both of these jobs and they'll be available to be worked on by contributors. Once some work has been completed in your project, your project dashboards would start populating. Starting with the productivity dashboard, this dashboard is separated into two parts. 
At the top, you will have the progress section, which shows you the state of completion of each of your jobs. In the bottom half, you will see the throughput section that shows you how much work is getting done and how quickly. This dashboard includes filters, which allow you to zero in on various state ranges or time slot your jobs. Second, you have the quality dashboard. The quality dashboard presents you with the metrics that are being collected in the work and following QA job loop. In this particular example, the default setting has been used with the addition of some reasons for rejection. Reasons for rejection can be configured on the quality settings page. They're entered here and will be presented on dashboard in order of frequency or the amount of times that they were chosen as the reason for rejection. Alternatively, you may wish to allow the QA contributor to modify the original contributor's judgment, improving the quality of the data at the same time. In that case, the dashboard will look like this. Instead of an accept and reject metric, you get an accept and modify metric. Quality Flow will also collect details about which particular questions were being changed the most often, and depending on what tool you're using, additional rates such as word error, tag error. Finally, on the quality settings page, you'll also notice that there is a checkbox to enable the feedback loop. When this is enabled, feedback will be provided to the original contributor and they must acknowledge the feedback before they can receive any new tasks. Activity in the feedback loop is captured on the feedback dashboard. Here you can see that one of the feedbacks has been disputed. And as the job owner, you can click into this dispute, view the original contributor and the result of QA along with the feedback, and make your final decision. On the contributor dashboard, all of the productivity and quality information is rolled up and presented by a contributor. Scrolling to the bottom of the dashboard, you can also monitor your QA checker's behavior with a view to understand consistency within the QA process. And finally, all of the dashboard information is downloadable in the daily reports, which are available on the reports downloadable tab. Once some units have been through the work QA cycle, you may wish to perform rework or other targeted reviews or add some annotations or evaluations to certain units. In a quality flow project, you can create additional jobs within the same project. Either create a new job directly from the data box, as we saw before, or for reviews, you can copy an existing job like this. Make sure to include the design. This has created a copy of your job on the reviews canvas. There are two ways to get data into these jobs, which we can demonstrate by looking at a project that already has some work completed. One way is to set a recurring pattern by clicking on the dot here. Choose where to pull the data from. This can be your central project data source or else one of the previous jobs. There are now options for whether or not to include original responses and whether or not to include to create additional judgments in your second job. Details for these different settings can be found in our Success Center documentation and will also be covered in another video. Choose your frequency and any filter criteria. For example, you may wish to send through everything that was rejected from QA. This means that every two hours, everything that fits this filter criteria will go through to that second job. Another way to get data into these jobs is to use the data set table to make one-off decisions about which units you want to send to particular jobs. For example, I could filter on a particular worker and just send all of those units to my job. In addition, you can use the data set table to get different views on your data and annotations monitoring your results in real time without needing to send them to a job. You can see the results here, or you can click into each unit to view a history of the work that's been done in that unit. You can select some units and create a data group. You can view your data groups on the data group tab 
and these will also appear as a column in your data set table that is sortable and filterable, so you can make selections on the basis when choosing units to send to jobs. Thank you so much for watching, and if you have any questions, please reach out to your app and contact.